and how has technology changed diplomacy among Canadian diplomats? Well, you know, it's when I started at the State Department in 2006, it's very easy to sort of when you see all the events that have happened with the Arab Spring and so forth, to, it's easy to forget how unknown these types of technologies were and how not taken seriously they were inside of government offices. You couldn't say YouTube and Google and Facebook and in any serious meeting in 2006 or 2007. And I would argue even into the sort of early part of, of 2008. Um, eventually events caught up. But so the way that people thought about technology was initially just a way to communicate and advocate policy. So it, it sort of fell very narrowly in a public diplomacy portfolio. And you know, I'm not you know, trying to take a disparaging view of public diplomacy, but it's, it's really just one instrument <laughs> of, of statecraft. Um, you know, what I was more interested in is how could technology be used by opposition groups? Um, how could technology be used as a tool for organizing? Um, and it was just sort of this missing tool in our diplomatic arsenal. It was a missing tool. It, it was a tool that was being used on the ground, and we, it, it was a huge blind spot for us in, in government. We weren't seeing um, how this was empowering young people in all these different really troubled in, environments. And the only reason I had an awareness of this was just having been uh, on the ground. Um, now, to the Bush administration's credit, they, you know, they latched onto this you know, pretty quickly around mid-2007, early 2008, um, during the anti-FARC protests in Colombia, which was the sort of first moment where technology was seen as a major mobilizing tool. But I would argue we're still figuring it out. Um, you know, the, the government has gone from having no relationships with Silicon Valley companies to now all the sort of <laughs> strange things that you see in the news on one side. Um, but th there, there's a huge... Um, value in looking at what is government good at. Government understands the geopolitics of every corner of the globe. They're not technology experts. What does the technology industry understand? They understand the tools and where they're going. So to answer your question, sort of where does technology fit into foreign policy or statecraft, I would argue that um, you know, it's, it's the sort of missing tool that we need to, to, to incorporate. I don't see how you can understand geopolitics in the future without understanding the technological trends.